Hi, I'm attorney Tammy Saltzman and you are watching Divorce Connection Network. Today I'm so pleased to introduce you to Dr. Robin Goldstein. Hi Robin, how are you? I'm great, good morning. Good morning, nice to meet you and see you. Robin and I uh, met through her husband, an attorney here in town. Um, Robin has been practicing for a very long time here in Boca Raton, <laughs> very long time, and she is in private practice as a licensed psychologist. And today we're going to talk about what happens when the initial shock wears off that you're actually getting divorced. One spouse moves out and the process has begun. And the danger of falling off the cliff, so to speak, is kind Correct. of how you phrased it. So um, we're going to go into tips on how not to. And um, just to kind of of explain to the audience what going off the edge means excessive dating so going out into a bar and picking up every woman you see like a kid in a candy store um, going on every single dating website and posting your picture and all day long you're looking for who is communicating with you excessive drinking excessive eating uh, excessive sleeping or lack of sleeping Insomnia, staying up all night, way. right? Okay, so Robin, I know from my own personal experience that we all go through this time of denial, and then when it starts to sink in, mm -hmm. now we have to be in action, right? Right. So how do we create more balance so that we're not one of the victims who go over the edge? Many people are really shocked about the intensity of their emotions. For many people, it's the most depressed, the most anxious, the most upset they've ever been in their life. As I always explain to people, if you read the paper every week, there's some story about somebody who's killed his wife and kids, or vice versa, or commits suicide. It is, if, if you are a caring person, you know, unless you were totally superficial and you were never really invested in your partner to begin with, this is an intense experience. We are a pair bonding species. So if you've been a reasonably well-balanced person emotionally before, it's a shock to you. And you just want to escape that. You want to get out of it any way you can. So drinking and drugging are obvious things. Drinking and drugging do change how we feel but they have all kinds of penalties on the back end. The more you do it, really, the more anxious and depressed you can. The other well-meaning advice that lots of people give is you just need to meet somebody new and start over. Or you think, I've got to find somebody else right away. So people throw themselves into dating or going on the websites or picking up people and sleeping around a lot. Anything to avoid experiencing the emotions that they really feel. And what I always advise people is there aren't a lot of shortcuts. Right. If you have a good heart, if you are a caring person, if you truly loved, and even the people who leave the relationship, right. they're often as totally devastated and distressed because a lot of people don't leave because they don't love the person, they leave because there are too many bad things for them. I'm the one who wanted the divorce. Right. And then once... <clears throat> he left, mm -hmm. I begged him to work on the marriage. Right. You know, and like, you know, throw, th you throw someone out because you're pissed <laughs> off, right. and then, you you know, when it starts to sink in, you're like, oh my God, what this did I do? This is even worse. Right. right. Well, you know, you start to think about your family, and, right. you know, so you might go through this stage where you're begging, let's go for help, let's try before we go through with the divorce. Right. Um, I, I know that for me, I was on a divorce diet. I could not eat. When right. I get That's stressed what I call out. When I see somebody and they've lost 20 pounds and I said, oh my God, it's the divorce diet. The divorce People diet. People can't eat. They can't sleep. Those are pretty normal reactions. Not necessarily healthy and not something you shouldn't do something about. And there are medicines that can help people with that physical aspect, which I advise people to take. But not, you know, people think, well, if I drink, I'll sleep better. Alcohol is not, no. a good, not a good sedative. It helps you fall asleep, but then the rest of the night is worse sleep. And again, in the morning. Right. In the morning, you feel worse. Right. <laughs> and then you got to go to work and you got to deal with the people in your life and you're hungover. Right. Um, I find that 
balance comes when you have moderation. Right. So it's okay to date and it's okay to go out and have a drink. And it's, you know, it's absolutely. O- and it's okay to even stay in bed and be depressed. Right. You know, I had a therapist once say to me, there are three parts to the day. Morning, afternoon, evening. Pick one, have your have your pity party, and then be productive the other two parts of the day. That's good advice. And it was really good advice. You know, it was it kind of gives you permission to stay in your pajamas and be in bed and be depressed or come home early and take a nap depending on you know what what you need right there's something wrong with you if you love someone enough to marry them maybe have children with them live together and you separate and you go oh tra la la who cares you know you are gonna have emotions what I tell people is it's like a wild horse you have to ride it you know there's no shortcuts you can't escape You can't fall off the cliff and say, well, I'll get drunk and then I won't feel all this terrible misery or I'll just sleep all day and hide under the covers and not feel it. You have to go through it to some extent, you know. For most people, you will learn more about who you are, what you need as a person. You can grow and develop, but not if you try to short-circuit the process by throwing yourself into new relationships, lots of sex, lots of drugs, whatever. You know, everyone, when they get divorced, goes into that next rebound Mm -hmm. relationship. And, you know, you don't want to believe that it's just a rebound, and you don't want to believe, like, you think, okay, this is the one. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more about validation Mm -hmm. than it is even about the next relationship. If you've been rejected, for sure, or if you were unhappy, you just want somebody... And there's nothing wrong with dating some. Just don't rush, don't move in with somebody right away, don't make a commitment right away. You are not stable. You are not yourself. It takes a while if you're going to be a good person and grow and develop and really learn what matters to you to find out who you want and what you want. It's an easy escape to say, oh, everything's wonderful. I'm in love with this person. She's perfect. He's perfect. You know, I'm going to live happily ever after. It's not real. A lot of times people have a problem being alone. For sure. You know, being alone is very confrontational to some. Right. You know, I, there's a lot of men that they're the relationship kind. They mm-hmm. don't want to be dating and they don't want to go from girl to girl. They just want someone to come home to every single night. Right. And those types of men usually end up married very quickly after they separate from their former spouse. And then there's women who just, they're so needy. Mm-hmm that they can't be alone. They need someone in their lives to help them and to talk with them and to provide for them and to pay for things. And, um, you know, it's the more I feel like you need, the more you shouldn't. Right. We all need people. Most of us are social beings. That's a healthy thing. But when you're so needy that you take whoever comes along or the first person just to avoid that loneliness. And both men and women feel that. We need people. There's nothing unhealthy about that. What's unhealthy is not really taking the time to grow and discover who you are so that when you choose the next person, it's an improvement. Right. How many times I have seen in divorce cases where someone's getting divorced for the second or third time, they say to me, I can't believe I made the same mistake again. I can't right. believe that my ex-husband is the same, exa- my new husband is the right, same as my like ex-husband. Right. And quite often, they're like the dad, you know, or the mom or the mm-hmm. ex-wife or what have you. So I know that for me, there are certain things that if I see that red flag, I'm looking <laughs> for the sign, right? right? And when I see a signal mm-hmm. f- for me, and it pushes my button, and I say, uh-oh. <laughs> That's the wrong way. <laughs> Back in the day, I justified, made excuses. I saw all the flags, but I had my own agenda. So now when I see the flags, I run in the opposite direction. I'd rather be alone than unhappy. So I think that's what you need to take the time to learn. Who is the wrong fit? Why it's the wrong fit? 
so that you make better choices the next time out. You have to really think about that to figure it out. Right, exactly. I, I think that it's important if you're in a marriage with a person who is possessive and jealous and it made you feel suffocated and anxious all the time, that you be careful about finding that quality and you would be overly sensitive to that. Right. Um, if you were dating. Same thing with anger. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with infidelity. Right. So if you see someone who's, you know, not telling you where they're going or uh, <laughs> excusing themselves to take a phone call, right. that may push some of your monogamy buttons, mm -hmm. right? So the most important thing that we can come from all of this, I think, is if you are going through a divorce, to one, acknowledge that you're going to have some really crazy emotions. Yes. Right? Wouldn't that be the first? This definitely makes us pretty crazy. Right. <laughs> and then the second thing that we should uh, advise the audience is that take stock of what didn't work, right. take stock of who you are and what your values and core beliefs are, and kind of make a list of your ideal mate, right. of something better that you're looking for, so that you can make a better choice the next time around. Right. And thirdly, if you feel that you're off the cliff, and or that you can't sleep, or that you are losing too much weight, please, please seek the guidance of a licensed therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist mm -hmm. who could properly either prescribe therapy, a group therapy, or a medication for you to help you deal with the underlying emotions of what you're going through. That's correct. Divorce is a devastating thing, even when you want it yourself. So be aware that you're going to go through this roller coaster of emotions. So thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for Thank coming, you. Robin. We are going to have Robin's information posted on our website. There'll be a link to her website and her contact information. Again, she's been practicing a long time here in Boca Raton. And I welcome questions, emails, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.